Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Dichi Renz with Peachy. Welcome to another video about the MacBook. Yesterday I posted my personal video editor's review of the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, the new 2021 versions with the notches and all. Um, but today we're getting the perspective from a programmer. Matt is a friend. I have known him for over a decade now. So it's kind of fun to be back in Texas and kind of pull on some people in my life um, from my past life. So we'll kick it to Matt. Um, I'll make sure to put all the links in the description below as well as my video from yesterday. And I still have one of these videos up my sleeve. So make sure you're subscribed. I don't have any sleeves. I don't know why I did that. There are no, okay. Let's, let's hang out with Matt. Hello everyone. Um, with me to my left, I have Matt. We go way back. Way back. Way back. Okay. So You're 13, how do I, 14? yeah. So I'm 13, 14 <laughs> playing guitar at a, at a mega church. Okay. This is where I meet Matt. Matt does everything. So video production, coding, um, just on the side, you're literally like building apps, um, to, I mean, what are some of the apps that you started with? Like explain what they did. Yeah. So I just like solving problems and making my life easier. And so everything from just simple little stopwatch programs to network time synchronization, um, now we have a little app called Workflow Tools where I just got tired of the batch rename programs that were out there. They're all way too hard. Yeah. And so now you just drag and drop files at the menu bar, hit your batch rename, done. Or even just resizing images for live broadcasts. Like mm -hmm. some of that stuff was just super hard back in the day. Mm -hmm. Someone gives you an image, it's got to go on a broadcast screen. It needs to be 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI, RGB by the way. Mm -hmm. Don't give me the CMYK stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, art departments, they deliver stuff to you that's like crazy. And so we built a little program, you just drag and drop stuff up to it, it preps the images right size. Mm -hmm. And I remember, so things like that. Yeah, I so, remember something so simple too. You made an iPhone app where it basically populated like the latest graphics that everyone Yeah, could post. so like this is a program. Yeah, we have a <laughs> yeah. uh, app called Share Social. It's really kind of tongue twister. Yeah. Say it five times. Share in a row. Socials. Share I need a social. marketing director, hiring a marketing director. <laughs> Share Social is really cool because what it does is like you're an organization, um, whether you're nonprofit or for profit, and you got to distribute like these are our 10 videos, our 10 graphics that need to be put out on social media, right? So people were literally emailing and texting videos. Hey, here's the image. I'm like, this is horrible. So we built an app called Share Social where you can go in, create an organization, you add in your images, you download the free app on the App Store, and then the people that your social media uh, ambassadors, if you will, then just get a push like, hey, here are the 10 graphics that you're allowed to post mm -hmm. with some caption information. Real simple mm -hmm. thing, right? So, so like those are just a couple of yeah. things. What was so funny when I was in high school, um, I lasted three sessions. You had these early morning <laughs> sessions. 7 a.m. is a people, bad time. <laughs> yeah, you would have to show up at 7 a.m., but he would teach you the basics of like Objective-C and like how he was writing these apps, which I found super fascinating. But he made it more fun than later on in college when I tried to do comp sci and I'm a dropout, <laughs> so I, I failed. Um, but but that was really cool because that's what kind of got me in to um, you know being interested in coding I obviously ended up more in the video realm um, but that's what that's why I love just this like corner of creativity because I feel like there's a lot of overlap with video people photo music mm -hmm. um, coding so today we're, what we're gonna focus on is hey this new Mac besides just the bigger escape key which I'm sure you appreciate you, you know what? That's not true. Even have an escape key. That's probably why I didn't even notice it because I'm so used to not having an escape mm -hmm, button. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's a huge, huge deal it, for it, programmers. It yeah. Um, so besides that, you know, it's just pure performance and programmers, just like video editors, kind of have to, well, video editors don't have to sit and wait for renders anymore. Ayo, hopefully. Um, but, <laughs> but programmers have to kind of wait, re-render things, you know, if you change and if you want to play the program back. So um, we're going to do some comparisons today. Um, Matt's going to run through the different machines. Uh, you came so prepared, by the way. Thank you. He's making my job way easier. Um, so he's gonna run through the different machines that he tested. We have a Intel Mac Mini, and then we have um, the M1, and then we have an M1 Max, right? Yep, okay, right. cool. So run us through the different computers, and then we'll run through the test. Yeah, so I took two different um, programs that I've made. Uh, one of them is called Lifetime. It basically does like a network time synchronization. It's used in broadcast, radio programs, anything that you gotta synchronize a countdown basically, right? It was primarily written in Objective-C. Um, so this is 2000 pre Swift, pre Swift. Yeah. All the newer stuff though are, it's all written in Swift. So everything newer in the app, it's written in Swift. Um, everything else is Objective-Z. 
And then I also took an app that works with a really cool media asset management system that's called Iconic. And it is a bulk download utility for mm -hmm. Iconic. Um, it is written 100% in Swift. And if you want to completely geek out, it's actually using Swift packages under the hood. So it uses its own internal Swift libraries. It's more modern as far as approaching Swift. And it's actually written in Swift UI from an interface standpoint too. So I took both of those two sets of programs um, and compiled them on a top of the line, specced out Max, Mac Mini. Mm -hmm. That's Intel, 64 gigs of RAM, very fast, right? Now it's not Xeon, it's still six core, 3.2 i7 as mm -hmm. I can see here. So it's really fast. I'm still keeping this guy around. Matter of fact, I got this when I got the M1 stuff because I still need a machine to support, you know, Mac OS Sierra and, and even older VMs and CentOS 7 and things that aren't in the ARM architecture, right? Mm -hmm. Still be able to test. So I have the Intel. Then we have an M1 iMac. So it's a top spec M1 iMac. And then I have the M1 Max. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also a Max out laptop. And so it is 64 gigs of RAM M1 Max. Yeah. So I think we have the same setup, like top, uh, so the most cores too. Most M1 cores, Max. so yeah, yeah the, uh, we're, it doesn't, say, it doesn't okay. say, but it's the most all cores. All of the cores. I took these two programs and, you know, decided let's just build all these together. Mm -hmm. And so what we did, I took them and we do what's called a clean in Xcode. So basically Xcode's opened up with the project mm -hmm. on all the machines with the exact same code branch. All the libraries are already loaded, but there's nothing built from the code standpoint. So if you've ever had to write any code in your life before, it's, you know, command B for build, right? It's you basically take the code, it analyzes it all, looks for errors, looks for if there's any problems that might be in play, um, and then it runs the program and opens it. So um, I did that on all three of the Macs with these two different programs and the results were like, I actually wasn't surprised. Now, the interesting thing about Xcode versus like other Mac Electron apps. So like Electron apps are more like things like Slack. They're more single core operation apps. Uh, from what my understanding, they're more difficult. So Xcode, you know, Xcode is a multi-core application. So it's gonna be compiling stuff hopefully at a lot faster rate. If you're like myself, you're a programmer, you're also doing design. So if you're working in Photoshop, you've got other things going on while you're working in Xcode, that's where the Max I think is really going to shine especially when it comes to even display power and things like that. I imagine the biggest difference though, or the biggest delta was probably in between the Intel and M1, right? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So let me just pull open uh, Final Cut here. Okay, so here in Final Cut, what I've got, Sarah, is I've got a nice little timeline that basically shows the build times for my program lifetime. Hit screen record on all the different computers and hit Command R on two different Macs at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And I recorded those times. So the Intel, on this particular program to build from scratch, meaning nothing was built, there's nothing cached, 100% clean, uh, came out to be 29 seconds on Intel. Mm -hmm. So on Intel, to build this program, it's called Lifetime, on Intel, took 29 seconds. That's from the time I hit Command R, so it starts building it, and then it launches the program, that time's 29 seconds. Dropping that down now to the M1, we come into a time of 20 seconds. So you know, pretty good difference there, right? Mm -hmm. That's the standard M1. It's already a lot faster and a lot more buttery when it comes to working with Xcode. Going down to the M1 Max is we're just a little bit over 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you go from the Intel to a Max, we're talking half the build time practically uh, mm -hmm. on this particular program. Um, and that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And you can only imagine for the programs that are just, you know, maybe five Massive. times the size yes. of this. And, and that's the thing going through. Your time just increases. Just exactly. It's compiling through, you know, some C libraries, it's compiling through Objective-C, it's compiling through Swift stuff. Like it's, it's doing a fair amount there mm -hmm. um, with going from 30 seconds to, you know, 15 seconds. Right. So that's a pretty good time saving. Yeah. My other program, which is a downloader for Iconic, Media Asset Management stuff, lets you bulk download, manage collection trees, really fun stuff. Pure Swift application, mm -hmm. Swift UI, Intel, again, our friends on the Intel side came in at 27 seconds. Kind of slow. Mm -hmm. um, then we drop down to the uh, M1, we come in at 17 seconds. Wow. Um, M1 Max, oh wow, 10 seconds, <laughs> just a little bit over 10 seconds. Yeah. So, so when you're doing pure Swift, it's just... Yeah, like, pure Swift. Now, this is a little bit lighter program. Right. Um, you know, there's not as many things going on with it, but it's... You know, there's not any interface builders or anything like that to have to to uh, to, to render mm -hmm. out. On the Intel, the fans going off the chart. Yeah. I mean, full-on fans happening, lots of noise. 
You don't hear a no one bit of noise on the M1 Max, and mm -hmm. the same with the, the, the iMac. So yeah, pretty yeah. pretty big difference. I think again, the most important thing with that, not only is the M1 Max gonna be faster, um, but if you're doing other things with it. I was only using Xcode at, the, at this point. If you're doing other things because of the more memory handling you have mm -hmm. yeah, inside the, M the Max the, with the, the normal 64 M1 gigs. is limited to Yeah, 16 you're gigs. limited to 16 gigs. So it's an astounding 64 gigs of RAM on the Max. And you don't, you just don't feel the slowdown, even like I do on this 16 gig M1 iMac, I'll feel a little bit of that slowdown as you're working with other applications and you have other things going on. You don't feel that. You don't actually experience that with the Max. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're a great example of someone who does all of the things, like when I'm in Resolve, you know, I'm exporting, I'm doing a thumbnail in Lightroom or Photoshop, but with you, you could be, you could have video, design, photo, Xcode, you could have all of the things up. So I'm sure you felt that, that RAM difference from 16 to 64. It's, <laughs> it's huge. I'm actually gonna, I'm, my M1 is, uh, the, the iMac is kind of my primary machine right now, but it's actually like, yeah, We're replacing <laughs> it and it's going to become this because again, the horsepower that's right yeah. now on this laptop, it's incredible. And again, I was working on a plane uh, just the other day. You can sit with the laptop in your lap. It doesn't get hot. Mm -hmm. There's no fan noise and your battery lasts the entire time and barely even like blips the battery and yeah. you're building and doing all the stuff at the same time. I will say that it's it's heavier, but you know what? You you forget about that. Yeah. Um, you, you forget about that. It's a little bit heavier and it feels a slightly bulkier, but you don't remember that after you get the worst part mm -hmm. out of it. I mean, you just, you know, that kind of, you just kind of forget that. Yeah. Battery life is, is incredible. Having more memory, you know, obviously helps a lot with multitasking and having different things up and running and going at the same time. And those build times are, they really are, they're, they're, significantly faster, mm -hmm. especially if you're coming from an Intel environment. So when you're in Xcode, um, I'm comparing everything to video editing because that's, that's <laughs> you know, how my brain works. But when you're actually in Xcode, did you have any lag or anything addressable that the M1 fixes when you're just like actually working or is it really all about build times? Because like the, the equivalent you know, video would be scrubbing through 10-bit 422 footage. That is almost more important than render times, you know? So was there, putting the programmer hat on, was there anything about actually just being in the code or, um, you know, what your workflow is with programming that, that has changed in terms of speed from Intel Max? Oh, abs absolutely. I think Xcode, you know, not being an Xcode engineer, so I apologize if I'm misspeaking on this, but well, I, I would definitely say just even scrolling through, you know, a Swift file here, this one's not huge, you know, just side of a, a thousand lines of code, you know, it's a lot faster to scroll through this stuff on an M1 versus being on Intel. Okay, yeah. Um, going through files and just and working just generally through Xcode, I would say significantly faster. And even in the Swift UI world, um, I would say there's a few things that it just feels snappier um, and faster than working in Intel. Um, you definitely don't hear the fan starting to kick up like crazy like you would in an Intel world. So like generating Swift UI previews, for instance, um, I found it to be significantly faster on, on working in M1 Apple Silicon versus mm -hmm. on Intel. There's just something more inherent about how it works. Um, so as a developer, like I transitioned to using the Apple Silicon back in November, right when they started shipping the stuff out, you know, really everything came quickly. Um, if you use a lot of dependencies like CocoaPods, like that stuff came all across really, really fast. Things really quickly uh, were ported over to work in Apple Silicon. And now, I mean, there's very few things that are not native, of course, to Apple Silicon that, you know, that may cause a problem, especially if you're dealing with a lot of Docker containers, which even now Docker um, will work in Apple Silicon as well. So, you know, as a developer, it's a, I think it's a perfectly safe platform to embrace. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you're working on anything in the Apple world, you're gonna have to anyway, so you can build out your right. code um, into that. And so, you know, I say embrace it and, you know, if you can on the Mac, on the laptop side, you know, max out the RAM, which is what I did. If you can't, you can't change the RAM later. Yeah. So if you're gonna go ahead and invest into it now, invest with the most RAM that you can get, which is 64, um, and then you have a lot more room for multitasking, of course, mm -hmm. on the Mac. And that's the stuff that you experience in Xcode. I mean, it's a lot buttery, more smooth, I guess, as you work through your different files um, and compile times, uh, I mean, yeah, it's night and day from what we had in the Intel environment, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay.
ethic. Yeah. Not sure if you can speak to this, but the people who don't develop for iPhone, Mac apps, who don't use Xcode, how do those people handle the decision of, you know, kind of like Windows versus Mac? What is this huge transition to Apple Silicon mean to the people who are using, you know, other I, IEDs, IDEs? Yeah, I mean, so for instance, if you're in the uh, IDE, IDEs. In your, you know, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so if you are, you know, working in the web world, you're probably gonna work like in VS Code or something like that. Um, Nova is a really great app. It's for the Mac only, it's a native Mac app, but it's fantastic code editing. It's made by our uh, the Panic friends. So if you ever used Transmit before, they're from, uh, Nova's an app that's from, from those guys at Panic. Really, really great application. Matter of fact, it's this one down here. Um, but it is a, that in between that and VS Code, um, Nova's works great on Apple Silicon and, and so does VS Code. Um, you know, when you're working with those world, all the dependency stuff that you're going to be using, whether you're running like Node.js servers and things like that, Express, all that stuff works fine on Apple Silicon. Mm -hmm. So you're not really going to see any problems. And if anything, some of that stuff over time is becoming more native. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say there's any dangers when it comes to non uh, non Mac apps with mm -hmm. using um, with using Apple it'll, so okay. Apple Silicon architecture. Epic. Any Epic. other? Thoughts, comments, concerns? It's just a lot faster. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the crazy amount of time difference here between uh, the M1 Max, uh, the iMac, standard M1, Intel. I mean, you said all the things, it was super helpful. Thank you so much, Matt. And then, hey, what would you like the, the Peachy fam to know out there? Um, where can they find like workflow apps? What, what do you wanna? Plug, plug yeah, away, Matt. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> my company's Workflow Network, so workflownetwork.com, we've got a handful of just really great utilities um, from like flattening a folder structure to, you know, just image resizing, image management, things like that. Um, and I also, we do a lot of great work with uh, Synesis, synesis.io, um, and we've written all sorts of apps for systems like Iconic, uh, Cantomo Portal, which is a really high-end media asset management system. Uh, lots of different broadcasters and in, in, in media houses around uh, the country we do work with every single day on making their life a lot more efficient. So check it out. Uh, so if you're in, in that industry and, and looking for enhancements, go check out Synesis.io and also check out WorkfulNetwork.com for a few of our apps that we've got for simplifying your life, especially in the video world. Uh, it, it'd be an honor and privilege for you guys to, to look at that. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Yesterday I posted the video editor's review version of the 16-inch M1 Max, which it's me talking about that computer. Spoiler alert, I like it a lot. Um, also, happy Thanksgiving, it's just around the corner. And guys, if you need some gifts, maybe some stocking stuffers, maybe a gift for yourself, it's a party over here at peachymerch.com. We got AirPod cases. Do your AirPods look like this? boring gross and the case stretches out you need peachy pods at peachymerch.com where it reminds you every single day to stay peachy we have the dental floss size of airpods we have the airpod pros and we have the airpods third generation and these are the new airpods so we have cases for these as well oh my gosh we have beautiful apple watch bands all peachy mode but hey you're just like sarah i like to stay peachy but that orange, that peach is just a little bit too out there. Well, guess what? We got dark mode versions. We got all the things that you need at peachymerch.com. Where was I? Man, I just went into like, I went into a thing there. Um, hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, more to come, like, sub, see you in the next. Okay guys, stay peachy, okay bye.